Hey everyone and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to start on creating our balloon popper project with Python Turtle. So first things first, we are going to be going through four steps of our project development. Okay, we're going to start with defining the criteria for our project. We are then going to design it. We are then going to implement it. And finally, we are going to evaluate what we have created and see how that matches with the criteria. So first things first, let's define our project and define the criteria that we need to meet in order for this to be successful. So first things first, we need to be able to detect inputs with our balloon popper, okay? In order to increase the balloon size and have it pop, we need to be able to tell the computer to inflate it by registering a keyboard input. Then we also need to require multiple inputs in order to pop the balloon, okay? We don't just want to press the button once and it's popped, okay? We need to um, have a process of inflating the balloon to a certain point, okay? So we can check that with a condition. And once our balloon is of a certain size, then it will pop. And finally, we want to utilize variables, conditions, and functions, okay? So far for this course, we've been looking at a bunch of new tools um, that can help us out with our Python algorithms, uh, such as variables, conditions, and functions, and we want to utilize them inside of this project. All right, so now let's get started on the design of our balloon popper project. So first things first, we need a diagram to give us an idea on what we're going to create and what it's going to look like. So our turtle algorithm is going to look fairly simple, okay? It's just going to be a red dot being drawn on screen. And every time we click the up arrow on our keyboard, it is going to increase in size, okay? And once it reaches a certain size, it is going to pop, leaving behind some text. So that is what our uh, diagram is looking like right here. As you can see, it's going to increase in size and then pop. So hopefully that is what our final project looks like. Now this right here is going to be the flowchart of our project as well. You can see that there are a bunch of different sort of sections, and that is because we are using functions inside of our uh, project here. So we are splitting off into different chunks, okay, each representing a different function. Although the one on the left hand side, which begins with start, is going to be our main algorithm, okay? So you can see the first thing we're going to do is draw the balloon. And the draw balloon function is going to basically set the total color to red and then draw a dot to the screen. Then we are going to listen for when we are pressing the up key on our keyboard. And once we do that, we are going to inflate the balloon, okay? And the inflate balloon function uh, has a bit more stuff in it. This is gonna probably be where the biggest chunk of code for the project will be. And it is basically going to increase the diameter of the balloon by 10. It is then going to draw it to the screen. And then we are going to have an if statement where we check to see if the diameter is greater than or equals to the pop diameter, okay? So if we've reached the point at which we're about to pop, then we are gonna clear the turtle, reset the diameter, and write the text pop to the screen, okay? and then the function has ended. And you can also see on that diamond shape, which represents a condition, um, if the diameter is not greater than or equals to pop diameter, then we just skip over that code and we end the function there, okay? Allowing us to continuously press the up arrow key until it pops. We also have the pseudocode for the project right here, okay? So this is just a um, representation of our program in written English, okay? So you can easily read through this and see what we need to do without all of the Python syntax. So that is the design phase of our balloon popper algorithm set up and ready to go. Now, the next step is to jump into the code and begin implementing it. So I'll see you all then. All right, so now let's get started on creating our actual balloon popper project. All right, so here I am in a brand new Python project. You can see I got my main.py file uh, nice and empty, so we can begin. Now, the first thing we need to do, of course, is import turtle. So to do that, we're gonna go from turtle, import asterisk. So we're importing everything from the turtle library. Now, let's go ahead and create some variables. Now there are gonna be two variables. One of them is going to be the diameter of the balloon that we are going to initially create uh, in terms of pixels. And then we are also going to have another variable which is gonna define the pop diameter. And this is gonna basically be the diameter at which the balloon is gonna pop. 
So to do that, we can create a variable called diameter right here. And I'm going to set this to be equal to 40 initially. Then we can create a pop diameter, okay, pop underscore diameter, and I'm going to make this, let's just say 100, okay. So once our balloon gets 100 pixels in size, that is when it is going to pop. Now, for this project, we are going to be needing two functions, okay. The first function is going to be called draw balloon, and this is basically going to draw the balloon on screen for us, all right. So to do that, Let's go down to a new line and create that function. So to do so, I'm going to go def, and then I'm going to call the function draw underscore balloon. Now, we're not going to have any parameters um, sent over to this function, so we can just have empty brackets like so, put a colon, and then go to a new line, and it should be automatically indented for us. Now, inside this function, what we want to do is do two things. We first of all want to set the color of the balloon to be red uh, because you know later on in the project you might want to have different colored balloons every time it pops um, so we're just going to have a line of code here that sets the color to be red so to do that we can go color and then we can specify the color either in um, english so we can write down red blue etc or we can use hex colors for this i'm just going to go red like so and that's going to set our balloon to be red then we need to draw the balloon now, typically when drawing circles, we will draw the circle and then encapsulate it with a begin fill and end fill uh, commands in order to basically fill that in with a certain color. But there's another command that we can do which does a similar thing, and that is called dot. Now, what dot does is it basically draws a circle with a given diameter at the position of our turtle. Okay, so what we can do is we can go dot like so, and then we can specify a diameter. Now, unlike the circle command, we don't give it a radius. Okay, with a circle, we give it a radius, which is half the diameter of the circle. So for here, we can send in our diameter variable like so. Okay, so we can make it 40, we can make it 1000 if we want. Whatever we set this variable to be, um, that is what we're going to set the dot radius to be. Okay, now for testing purposes, let's go to a new line outside of the function. So keep clicking enter until we go back to the original indentation and we can call that function. So I'm going to go draw underscore balloon. Okay, and let's click run and see what happens. So I've clicked run and you can see that we have now drawn a red circle to the screen. Okay, so that is step one of our project complete. We have set up the ability to draw our balloon, uh, we've set the color and we are drawing it with the given diameter. Welcome back everyone, now let's continue on with our project. So previously we imported turtle, we set up some variables which keeps track of the current diameter of the balloon as well as the diameter at which our balloon is going to pop. Then we created the draw balloon function which basically sets the color to red and draws ourselves a dot with the given parameter. Okay, and we can see the result here when we run the program. Uh, and also, we uh, called the draw balloon function uh, to actually call this function at the start of the program. Now, what we need to do is we need to create our second function for the project, and that is going to be where a lot of the code for this uh, algorithm is going to be, and that is going to be in the inflate balloon function. So, Let's go to a new line here and create a new function. And that is going to be, so we can write down def, it's going to be inflate underscore balloon. Now, this function, again, is going to have no parameters being sent over, so we can leave that empty. And down inside of the function, what we are going to do is a number of different things. First of all, we want to increase the diameter here by a certain amount, okay? This can be 10, 5, whatever you want it to be. Then we need to draw the balloon, and then we need to check a condition. And that condition is going to be whether or not our diameter is greater than or equals to the pop diameter. Okay, if that condition is true, then that basically means that we are ready to pop. So we will clear the turtle. So we will uh, basically clear all the drawings that the turtle has done. We will set the diameter back to 40. And then we are going to draw some uh, text on screen that just says pop. First things first, what we need to do is we need to increase our diameter. So to do that, I'm going to go diameter. 
equals diameter plus 10. Uh, then what we want to do is draw the balloon. So we'll call the draw balloon function like so. Uh, now down here where we initially call draw balloon, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace that with the inflate balloon function. Now to test this out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a new line and call the inflate balloon function right here, okay? This is only gonna be temporary because later on we're gonna be tying this function to an input on our keyboard. But for now, let's just see if it works. So I'm gonna go here and click run. And what we see is an error. Now, the reason why we got this error is due to the fact that if we look in our inflate balloon function, you can see here we are going diameter equals diameter plus 10. Now, in Python, to create a variable, uh, you can see up here, all we need to do is write down a name for the variable, go equals, and then give it a value. Well, that's kind of what we're doing down here, okay? Uh, because basically, there is, in Python and many other uh, programming languages, there's the idea of scope, okay? Uh, because if we are inside of this function, we can create variables that are for this function only, okay? So let's just say inside of the inflate balloon function, we want to create a variable called inflate amount and set this to 10, okay? Well, that's gonna create a variable for this function, but we can't access this variable outside, okay? The inflate amount variable we have created right here only exists within the scope of this function right here, okay? Um, so what the Python compiler is thinking is, okay, so we have diameter. Now, is the person programming this referring to the variable over here, or do they want to create a local variable inside of this function? Okay, so Python doesn't really know exactly what you want to do, so we have to be explicit with that. So what we need to do is we need to tell Python that this diameter right here that we are referencing is a direct reference to the variable outside here. So how do we do that? Well, basically we need to tell them that when we are using the diameter variable inside of this function, we want to access the global variable, okay? And global variables are basically variables that we define outside of functions, for example. So to do that, what we need to do is on the first line of the function here, I'm gonna go global diameter. So now whenever we reference the diameter variable, it is going to know that we want to access the global version of that, okay? So when, right here when we're going diameter, it's going, okay, we need to reference the global variable, which is this one right here. Otherwise, it doesn't know if we want to access the global one or if we want to create ourselves a new variable. So there we go. Now, if we click run, we should see that it renders and straight away it increased the size by a tiny bit. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are gonna be continuing on with our balloon popper project. So now what we need to do is we need to set it up so that when we click the up arrow key, uh, the inflate balloon function right here gets called. So right now we're just calling it initially down at the bottom of our algorithm. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the line of code where we inflate the balloon. And instead I'm gonna replace that with a command and that is gonna be the on key command. Now the on key command takes two parameters. First of all, it takes a function. So let's send over the inflate balloon function, add in a comma, and then we need to give it the key that it's gonna be listening for in order to call that function. So the key we want to press is the up arrow key, and you can use any key on your keyboard for this. Um, so to define the up arrow key, we're gonna send over a string, so double quotation marks, and write the word up in it like so. So now when we press the up arrow key, it is going to call the inflate balloon function. So let's go ahead, click run, and see how this works. So when I click the up arrow key, you'll notice that nothing is happening. And the reason why is because the way that our algorithm is set up right now, okay? Uh, when it comes to Python and many programming languages, of course, it goes line by line. So first we import, then we create our variables, we define these functions here, uh, we then call draw balloon, we then call the on key command, and then it's done, okay? The algorithm is complete. Whereas with this, we don't want to finish the algorithm at the end. What we want to do is we want to listen for inputs, okay? We've already defined an input and its correlating function that we want to call, but we aren't listening for that input just yet. 
So in order to do that, we need to then call the listen command like so. And what this is going to do is, you know, it's going to keep the program running. It's going to keep the algorithm um, listening for that input. So we can click run once again. And now when we click the up arrow key, you'll see that the balloon increases in size every time we click it. Okay. The inflate balloon function is calling, which is increasing the diameter. And then we are drawing the balloon here, which of course sets the color red and draws the dot on screen. Now that's great and all, but at the moment, as you can see, we can increase this balloon to basically an infinite size, but we want to pop it once it reaches the pop diameter. So how do we do that? Well, that's going to involve using a condition, okay? An if statement where we check to see if the diameter is greater than or equals to pop diameter. So down here in the inflate balloon function, I'm going to go to a new line and I'm going to go if diameter is greater than or equals to pop diameter, then what we're going to do is we are going to, first of all, clear the turtle. So write clear, add two brackets like so. And what this is going to do is it's just going to remove or clear anything that the turtle has drawn so far. So this big red circle is going to disappear. Then what we want to do is we want to set the diameter back to 40. And then we want to write the word pop on screen. So to do that, we can just go write. And in here, we can send a parameter, which is going to be the text that's displayed. So it's a string, so double quotation marks. And then we can just write the word pop like so or whatever message you want to pop up. So now when we click run, you'll see that we can go here, press the up arrow, and once we reach 40 diameter, you'll see that it goes pop like so, okay? Um, and then of course we can keep doing it, keep bringing it up and it keeps inflating and then popping once it reaches uh, 100 pixels in diameter. Uh, one thing you may be thinking is over here in the inflate balloon function, in order for us to use the diameter variable, we needed to basically define that we are accessing the global diameter variable. So why don't we have to do that for pop diameter? Well, the reason why is because since Python is a dynamic language, that means it's going to assume quite a few things. But over here where we are basically assigning the diameter variable, it doesn't know if we want to create a new variable called diameter or update an existing one. Whereas over here, when we are referencing pop diameter, we aren't creating a new variable, okay? We, we can't confuse Python if we are creating one or assigning one, we are reading a value, okay? Um, so it's going to look through its list of different variables, it's going to go, okay, there's no local variable called pop diameter for us to read. So instead, we are going to access the global one, okay? So it's not necessary for us to define this variable um, that we're using as global. All right, so that is our balloon popper project completed. Now, the final step is to evaluate the project, okay? And see how it matches up to the criteria that we defined at the start. So first things first, let's go back to our definition and have a look at the criteria that we laid out for ourselves. First of all, we wanted to be able to detect inputs and we successfully done that with the on key command, okay? We were able to send over a function that we wanted to be called as well as a key for it to listen to. And we also wanted it to require multiple inputs to pop the balloon. And that was made possible with the if statement where we checked a certain condition, which was if the diameter is greater than or equals to the pop diameter, then we would have popped the balloon. And that allowed us to inflate the balloon multiple times before having it pop. And then finally, we wanted to utilize variables, conditions, and functions, which we successfully done. Okay, we had two variables, two functions, um, and a condition as well. Now, moving on from this project, there are many ways that you can improve upon it. You could, for example, make a variable which references a color for the balloon to be, and maybe every time the balloon pops, um, you could switch that color out to be a different one. For example, it could go red, blue, then yellow. There are many different things that you could do uh, to improve upon this balloon popper minigame. So definitely have a go at doing that.